In this video, I'm talking about the North America construction framing softwood lumber market and prices for the beginning of March 2024. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, back with more updates for what is going on with softwood lumber prices and the market across North America. Here we are at the beginning of March 2024. Yes, I've been away for a while. I haven't had a chance to make YouTubes since about the middle of last year. We did have a whole bunch of work coming in, plus I was doing upgrade to my dashboard for my customers, which is now completed. And also, I'm just back from the huge National Association of Home Builders conference that was in Las Vegas last week. Massive, massive event with tons of people. I think they said 120,000 attendees. I was speaking again. This time I had my own session. People will remember that last year I was on the keynote panel or super session as they call it with Robert Dietz and some of the other economists talking about the lumber market. And so this year my session was so popular they had an encore and I spoke twice. And anyone who did uh, register for the NEHB will be able to log in and go to my profile and look at the um, replay and see the recording if you didn't have a chance to be in the room. And so right now at uh, into the first week of March of 2024, lumber prices are starting to increase a little bit. It was quite flat for most of this year, a little bit of a pop right there in January, but that was following the usual seasonal drop at the end of the year. Last year, uh, 2023 prices were quite flat, very similar actually trend line to 2019, which is quite interesting. And you'll see that when I show you the graphs in just a moment. And so slow start to the year this year, Usually by February, prices start increasing because the large U.S. home builders are stocking up on the wood that they need for their projects coming up in the spring. So we did have sort of a little bit of a longer, harsher winter at the end of the season this year. And also people are being quite cautious, maybe overcautious, where they're wondering if prices are going to go down. So they're holding off on buying, at least until last week. Uh, the customers were so burned so badly during the incredible volatility of uh, 2021 and 2020 that nobody really has been wanting to stock up on inventory, even though, you know, building is coming back. 2024 will be a better year for construction than last year. And so... A lot of just-in-time buying, a lot of calling around to their various suppliers, whether the sawmills or the wholesalers and reloads, just picking up the little pieces of wood here and there that they absolutely needed. So now, as March starts to come on, buying has uh, improved and prices are just starting to go up a little bit. So let's take a look at some of the graphs and see what exactly is going on. And so here we have two year rolling pure weekly price of that benchmark item, Western Spruce Pine for a kiln dried, two by four, number two and better. It is no longer produced at the highest volume across North America, but still very much the market leader. And the red line you can see 2022, very soon that volatility is gonna start working its way out of the graph. The yellow line for last year, it does look flat, but it actually did range over the approximately $150 per thousand board feet throughout the year as demand uh, increased for the building season. And then you can see the blue line this year still looking quite stable at a little bit of a higher level than what we saw last year and definitely, as I said, higher than it was uh, in the 2019 would be considered the last normal year. What to expect going forward? That blue line is going to increase up, but first there will be more production coming back online as the mills right now are quite a bit curtailed. And then here we have those top six items the top line being that Western Spruce I was just showing you, Southern Pine on the east side and Eastern Spruce, these three items all meet the building code and are interchangeable in terms of application. And so customer 
uh, purchases depend on preference of the builder and also what is the price. The fourth item there is your studs. Can't build a house without studs. Green Douglas fir, a specialty product that only grows on the coast. Uh, Douglas fir is the only species that can air dry without cracking and waning and is much preferred by architects uh, on the eastern seaboard of the United States and also is used in uh, high-end home building in Texas and California. And then, of course, your Canadian softwood plywood 9.5 millimeters or 3 8 inch, which is also the benchmark, uh, and it's another item needed. Can't build a house without some kind of panel, whether it's plywood or OSB. This is the same data you were just looking at presented as a graph. So you can see that by June of this year, when the lines move into where we are now, and that volatility from 2022 will no longer be visible, it'll show you a little bit better what's happening with those prices. But there is that seasonal up and down, as we had in July of last year, a little bit of a peak, nothing compared to what it was, of course, in the previous two years, but much more similar to what we would consider the last normal year, 2018, and also 2019. Going forward, I would expect uh, into July of this year for those prices to peak again, maybe a little bit more. But like I said, at first, watch for manufacturing volumes to increase. There's so much capacity ready to come back online before prices really start going up. Okay, and so I think it's very important to notice how the trend line for last year and the beginning of this year is very similar to 2019, which we can sort of call the last normal year. 2019 was not a great year for housing starts. 2018 was a good year. And so at that time, the benchmark Western Spruce 2x4 that I talk about most often price did reach US $550 per thousand board feet, which was the record. Uh, people will remember that for about 10 years prior to that, that price lingered at down around $250 per thousand. We are not gonna say, we are not gonna see that low price again because at this time, the cost of production for the mills has essentially doubled from where it was before all the changes to society in 2020. So at the moment, the floor for that benchmark Western Spruce 2x4 is somewhere around 420, 440, which is where that price is right now. And so what does that mean? It doesn't mean the price is gonna go up to 1600 the way it did uh, you know, with all those extreme things that happened all at the same time during 2020 and 2021. The fact that the trend line for 2023 was very similar, although at a higher level than 2019, does give indication that we are back into a time of more stability. One of the reasons for that really is the sawmill curtailments. So all across the continent, very specifically the large operators here in British Columbia, and in the Pacific Northwest, took downtime and curtailed when the prices were getting soft and demand was slow, which hadn't really been the practice before. It is very expensive to curtail a sawmill, and it's very expensive to bring it back online. So in the past, you know, when that uh, price bottom, when the floor was lower, it was a little bit easier for the mills to keep running at a loss uh, in hopes that prices would improve rather than curtailing if it was only going to be for a couple of months or six weeks and then having to call back all their loggers, having to get the truckers back on, calling in their mill workers. It's a very, very big deal. So the stakes have changed and toward the end of 2022, you know, in middle of 2022, when the interest rates started going up, housing slowed down and lumber sales slowed down. And soon after that, the mills started to take curtailment and downtime in response to slowing market conditions much more quickly than they had before. So what we have now is approximately 77% uh, sawmill capacity utilization rates. This data comes out of a very good organization in Portland, Oregon called the Western Wood Products Association. They do a monthly newsletter called Lumber Track. 
it does come out on a lag unlike my lumber prices which come out every week for that week uh, similar to the macroeconomic data that comes out on a couple of months later the lumber track lets you know what are the sawmill capacity utilization rates for the three months prior and so those highly invested optimized mills uh, in Canada, British Columbia and the Northwest were running at about 77% where really for them optimally is above 90, which means there is a lot of volume of wood available to come back online, which is what I think is going to happen first before prices start really rising. So the mills want to get their regular, you know, many rail car loads per week out of the mill rather than increasing the price but still not selling very good volumes. And so watch for that. In addition to seeing what the lumber prices are doing that Madison's is reporting, look at how many mills are re-ramping up production after having been curtailed. So we do have a new publication called Madison Sawmill Curtailment Lookout comes out once a month and lets you know all across North America, all the manufacturers, including the container board and pulp and paper, when they're down and how much volume that's going to reduce. So watch for that. And um, the other new thing that started happening here at Madison's is I made an index because um, people who have been watching my videos for a couple of years now will remember that the Chicago Mercantile Exchange has updated what is the lumber futures. And so the thing about that is, you know, the previous lumber futures ticker, which was going from like 1960 to the middle of 20, well, the middle of last year, actually, 2023, now is uh, retired. And the new lumber futures ticker, which started in uh, mid 2022, so it's been about a year and a half, uh, almost two years now, it does not have a history. So anybody trying to assess what's going on with uh, any market conditions or really doing any analytics needs to see you know a timeline of the history so what i did was created the madison's lumber prices index which is constructed in the same way as the new lumber futures uh, of course tracking cash or print as we call it so that goes back to 1952 because i have the data so Let's look at those graphs and have an idea of what's going on there with the index and comparing, you know, the past five years to now and maybe trying to get an idea of how the market is going to move over the next few months as we get into spring. So as another measure of what's going on with the market, as opposed to the pure individual prices of each commodity item, this index is constructed in the same way as the lumber futures. So Western spruce, Eastern spruce, hemp fir inland, and KD Douglas fir still heavily weighted towards Western spruce uh, at about a 62% ratio. And so this shows you a little bit more uh, across the continent what's going on, as opposed to having to look at each price and compare them to each other. On my dashboard that my customers can log into, there is a comparison screen and you can look at up to five individual commodities against each other to see uh, how those prices are changing, let you know where are the advantages if some item prices are staying flat while others are going up as customers are buying something that they prefer. And so you can see how this index is stabilizing over the past year, giving us a lot of indication that that volatility we saw for those couple of years really has been behind us. This is the same data showed um, as a graph. And again, of course, uh, the orange line and the blue line, 2020, 2021, halfway through 2022, those are not expected to reach that level again, which can be expected to provide more stability for industry to be able to see what is happening with the market and to make their plans for operation, especially since sawmills usually plan about six quarters in advance or a year and a half. And so when you have this better stable line for now a year and a half 
the confidence of the producers to see how the market is moving along is better than it was, you know, a year and a half or a couple of years ago. I would expect that uh, bold burgundy line of this year to increase as we get into summer, but for a short term. I think this year is going to be a bit of a blip and then it'll slow down as we get into Labor Day and winter. This graph is showing you, again, the index, which is the orange line, against the lumber futures. Okay, so what I did here was the weekly close Friday of lumber futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Of course, there was a premium to futures because, you know, it's more volatile and it's a hedge as opposed to cash, which is actual delivery of lumber. But the trend line movement is almost identical. Okay, great. And so that's the situation right now. Uh, next week, I'll do another video uh, about the lumber market. And I'll also do a video about panel, letting you know what's going on with plywood and OSB. Right now, I'm going to leave it there and check back often. Go on my website, read the updates that we do um, in the blog every week and see what's going on with the index and then see what's happening with the actual lumber prices. If you need to know more data, the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track every week all across North America, go on my website. There's a link here in the caption. Ask for a sample and you can see the prices that we track and what those prices are. You'll also get the commentary explaining why those prices are changed. This is all what my customers access through my dashboard. And if you like that, you can subscribe, you can fill out a form and we'll send you an invoice. Otherwise, subscribe here so that you will be notified when we make a new update and click like so other viewers will get recommended this video of great information.